Welcome back to Scotland. It's the start of our second full season at Four Far. I've been busy reshaping the squad, ready for the challenge of a higher level. And I think I've done a pretty good job. We have a couple of, well, one out and a couple of loanies. Um, Andrew Miller, who you might remember from last season, um, I don't know if you ever actually saw him in action, but a young centre-back. We've sent him to Gateshead on loan, uh, hopefully he'll get plenty of playing time there and will any luck improve. Christopher Olelakan is the only person we've actually ever brought through from our um, youth academy so far. He's not great, but he had a bit more potential than the rest, so we've got him and we're sending him out on loan. I'm not overly happy with the loan because it's at a lower level than he is supposed to be according to my staff um, and they're not even making him like a regular player or anything he's a squad player I think so I don't know how much football he'll get it might be a waste of time now the only one actually out out is Seb Ross who we were looking at upgrading um, at least the backup at right wing We've got Blackwell, of course, who was very good last season. Um, we are now looking at people who might just oust Blackwell from his starting spot. But Seb Ross got bent out of shape because of someone else we brought in to play in central midfield. I don't know if he noticed, but we don't really play him in central midfield. He's training as a winger. I don't know why he thought this person was going to steal his spot. He got annoyed. I told him to get over himself. He didn't like that. Breaking came in with an offer, and being as I was looking to upgrade the position, I said, yeah, all right then. Um, now, in terms of what we've actually done, you can see here we have spent £43,000. Uh, now, McCormick, uh, Morrison, and McMenamin are three youngsters who we are going to bung in our reserves. Oh, by the way, we have an under-18 side now. No one told me, just noticed it one day that we had under 18s apparently so that's nice there's no one in it all our under 18s are in the reserves and to be perfectly honest I don't think there's much point there being anyone in it for some time um, because we don't have that many reserves anyone who comes through may as well go in there it depends if they play competitive games I might bung them in there because this lot only seem to play friendlies anyway moving on <clears throat> right our first signing of the summer was Luke Campbell who is a slightly better backup goalkeeper than Zach Paris he's also young they're both 19 he's got a lot of potential and yeah it was just it was just a decent deal he's not on much of a wage although last season that would have made him our second highest paid player not this season oh no that cash we've got we've been splashing it um, yeah, now, Charlie Barker, who we actually paid £40,000 for from Dorking, and are paying a wage of £83,000, which was about a quarter of last season's total wage bill. Uh, he is a good centre-back, aggressive, brave, determined, and he is one of our starting ones. Now, what I have been relying on a lot Obviously, I do the comparison with who we've got and are they looking actually any better. Um, for that, I would use this. So, theoretically, where are we? Morrison was our, well, our best starting centre-back. So, you can see there, from this octagon, they're about the same. Morrison's a little bit better defending and attacking, oddly. Um, but Barker's got better mentals, a bit more pace. Um, and the other thing I've been using now... You don't. You either get the coach report if they're here, obviously, or the scout report. But what it gives you is this little sort of summary here: good League One player could become leading League One player. And I've basically been using that as my guide because, it's like, right, okay, we are in League One. If he's a good League One player, he's probably worth signing. Um, there are quite a few who are described as that, and then I can use like, does he like big matches? Is he consistent? That sort of thing to whittle them down and then do the comparison with the few we've got left 
Anyway, I think Charlie Barker will be a good signing for us. Now, Jordan Houston, we needed to upgrade at right back. We have upgraded at right back. Uh, if I compare him with McIntosh, who did the job pretty well for us last season, uh, maybe not quite so good defensively, but physically more pace, better technique. So, yeah. And, I mean, McIntosh can probably do a decent job. But with certainly an upgrade overall at right back because below uh, below that wasn't great so we've got two decent right backs now now Jordan Doherty central midfielder um, what are we training him as we're training him as oh actually ball winning midfielder yeah I'm using him as a defensive midfielder um, big matches and consistency 114,000 in wages oh bless our Korean owner there is no way we could have done anything like... Well, they wouldn't have let me spend that sort of money before. Um, as you can see from this, he's a leading League One player, so he's very good for our level. Um, oh, yes. By the way, while we're talking about our level, um, Beverly uh, uh, Lubala, who was League Two's player of the season last season, as it turned out, um, I actually saw him um, on the football highlights this weekend, scoring for Burton Albion. So he actually plays in the English League One, which is why he tore up Scottish League Two quite so badly. Uh, now, William Gillingham is sort of like a third choice centre-back. Lacks a little on the composure and decisions. Good in the air, though, and certainly will be a very solid um, third choice there if either uh, Barker or Morrison, who is still a starter, go down I've kind of managed to do what I thought I was gonna do and we have strengthened about five or six positions uh, now Tyler Mikita who is at the moment a backup but could become a starter his performances in preseason have been encouraging and yeah he is an advanced playmaker I think he's gonna be very good he's got some potential to come and yeah again good league one player could become a leading league one player he's consistent all the things we like now <clears throat> part of me i'll admit i mean he's decent as a defensive midfielder he's not starting quality but how can you not sign someone called naughty naughty i mean i couldn't resist it's just too good um he will be a Defensive midfield. He is a good League One player, so there is a perfectly good reason to sign him. Doesn't like the big matches so much, but he's consistent again. Um, solid physicals, pretty decent at everything else. Lacks a little bit of aggression, <clears throat> but which is a surprise, really, because I mean, you'd think he'd be very aggressive with the number of people who would be doing um, Ebenezer good um, impressions at him, effectively. Uh, now, Tyreek Backinson, another central midfielder. So we have really stocked up on central midfield. 151 grand. That's half last year's wages. Um, a good League One player again. Likes big matches. Consistent. There's a theme developing here. Um, now, that left us in need of some forwards. And in has come Sean Boyd, who is decent in the air. And again, good League One player. And Innes Cameron, who is also very good in the air and, again, a good League One player. So <clears throat> Blair Henderson might well be taking a back seat this season. I have got my eyes on a few others, but we won't tell you about them just yet. It's um, Basically, it's right wing and a little bit more quality at left back. So left back backup options aren't fantastic. But it's the League Cup again, and... Believe it or not, we have been drawn against St. Johnston yet again. We've also got Dundee United again, who we had in our group last year. Um, I don't remember who else we had in the group last year. I, well, Alor, I think, were one of them. We haven't got them. I think we've got Cove Rangers or something. Um, and Stenhouse Mill, I don't think we've got, because I don't think they were league last season. Anyway, this is the lineup: McCallum, Houston, Barker, Morrison... Waters, Doherty, Backinson, Farrell, Blackwell, Lubala, Cameron. So you'll recognise, well, McCallum, Morrison, <coughs> Farrell, Blackwell, Lubala. So yeah, five starters, six new boys. We have dropped it back to the... Um, right, let's auto number. No one wants a specific number, so it doesn't really matter. 
uh, we've dropped it back to the, the standard um, tactic rather than the very attacking one that we were using because we were just better than most people last season. Not entirely sure that's going to be the case this season. Probably against Stenhouse Moor we could go attacking. We are supposed to beat them. We are favourites. Obviously not a lot of response from several of these boys because, you know, they don't really know me. But fortunately, I think team cohesion hasn't been affected too much because um, because we do have like half of last year's starting lineup still on the pitch. And um, yeah, it will improve anyway. Our match sharpness is not too bad. We have played some friendlies, the usual um, absolute slaughters that we tend to dish out in these things. Now, see, it's it's a slightly odd phenomenon for us actually being like the favourites in a League Cup game. I don't think that's really happened to us before. This highlight is going on suspiciously long, so it may actually be a genuine highlight. Some Doherty, Blackwell, gets it out to Lubala. Cuts inside. Oh, <clears throat> uh, Apparently commonly known as Bez as well, by the way. Um, whether I'll remember that or just, you know, shout his name. Bring it down, Blackwell. Come on. Come on, boys. We need to get the ball on the ground. There we go. Well done, Battinson. Cameron. Farrell. Makes a mess of that. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to nip in there. Right, that's yours. Bring it down. Control it. Bring it forward. Okay, Waters, where are we going with this? Inside to Doherty. Blackwell. Oh. Well. Better touch there from Blackwell. That might have been a goal, might it? But not to be. Right, come on, lads. Now, I've got to remember this is not one of my friendlies and we're not just going to absolutely steamroll this lot, necessarily. Oh, my. Oh, my Lord. What? A, how did that end up where, they, where it did? Who did that hit to get deflected there? And why did none of the rest of you consider, you know, running after the ball? These are questions I will be asking later, so please feel free to take notes. Did that come off of Houston's shoulder? <sighs> right, okay. Not the ideal start. Come on, Waters. He's knocked it over. Cameron! That's that aerial presence we didn't really have last season. <clears throat> Henderson was a decent finisher, but not the best in the air. Now we've got the likes of Innes Cameron and indeed Sean Boyd. I think it's Sean. Boyd, anyway. Um, that we can just knock those balls into and they will get on the end of them. Which does obviously, also, because we've added some a bit more quality in the air at centre back. Hey, Backinson. Um, and up front, we are a bit more dangerous from set pieces now as well. Um, helped as well by the fact we have a set piece coach these days and we do occasionally train on them, presumably. So, yeah. <clears throat> right. Well, this is better. Now that we're leaning. Leaning? I'm not sure that's an English word. I think I meant to say leading. Or winning. Oddly, if I'd have done it the other way round, weeding would have been an English word. It wouldn't have made sense, but it would have been an English word. Farrell! Oh, no. Not the finish we were hoping for. We need it. Well done, Waters. Farrell gets it to Lubala. Back to Doherty. Okay, Lubala. Backinson through to Cameron. Fires it in. Oh, it's a beautiful finish from Innes Cameron. 
16 minutes gone, it's 3-1. It's been quite the start. Another highlight straight from the kickoff. I've got a Christmas pudding going cold here. Can we get on with these highlights? Thanks, Mum, by the way. It's my second one. Just started it. Oh, Cameron, again, that aerial threat. 4-1 in 17 minutes. Is it going to be one of those seasons? Not even attacking. I mean, to be fair, the only goal they've scored has come from... I don't know how the ball got through to him. And everyone just sort of seemed to switch off. Waters. No, oh, Doherty picks it up, though. Uh, the role we've got him playing is uh, ball-winning midfielder, um, which last season that was a more sort of creative role, but this season we've got the playmaker further forward. I think you could have brought that down, Waters, if I'm honest. Possibly even headed it back to your goalkeeper. Well, that was... I think McCallum made a bit more of that than there was. Wasn't the best effort, was it? Blimey, this game is just one chance after another, isn't it? Waters. No, Morrison. Two Waters. Okay. Oh, Doherty. Nice touch. Oh, it's a good save, but he was offside. Ah, the Blair Henderson disease. I wonder if he's learned the rules over the over the summer. Okay, Wilkinson, who is the um, playmaker, Farrell, who is the man supposed to be getting in into the box and supporting the uh, the front three. Lubala still playing that inside forward role, coming inside. Blackwell more the winger. Okay. I think this is going to be quite a long first episode if this game is anything to go by. I tried to get through those transfers as quick as I could. It's a good job I did. All right, Lubala. Go on, Bez. Oh, knocks it inside to Farrell. Crosses it over. Blackwell. Oh, dear. I'm sure there is a cross and Blackwell joke in there somewhere, but... I don't know how many people in this generation would get that. Are they even a thing anymore? With those cooking sauces of theirs? Oh, hello. Hello. That nearly surprised him at his near post. Oh. That could have gone anywhere. I don't even know what was happening there. It's like ricocheting. <sighs> Another highlight. In your money's worth in this one. Well, you would be if you were paying, which obviously you're not. Blackwell? Oh, come on, Blackwell. You've got to do better than that. Getting yourself in that position and then wasting it like that. Not good, son. Not good. Has Cameron got a hat trick? He might have. And is it a hat-trick of headers? Somebody let me know. Well, Cove Rangers and Dundee United are drawing. Which is good, because if someone else can take, you know, points off of one of them. Hey, Tom Blackwell, there we go. Assist by Bez. It's 5-1. I mean, obviously, yes, it's away from home, but this is the easiest game we are going to get in this group. But you never know, you might see more than one game in this group if it's all sort of like down to um, the last game for, for actually getting through. Uh, we've had lots of shots so far, so I'm happy. Right, please don't play badly in the second half, just because I said I was happy. I know there is a burning desire within most of you to make me miserable. Got 
Great touch, Blackwell. Hold on. Okay. He's hoofed it. Bring it down. Not really necessary, but Backinson has done well. He's looked good so far. Doherty has been solid, if unspectacular. Cameron fires him another one. <laughs> so, yes, he did have a hat trick because that is now his fourth goal of the season in 50 minutes. Okay. Um, now, I'm trying to make sure. Trying to sort of question whether I, I should make subs or not, or whether I should just basically change the entire side for the next game. I suppose it would really have helped if I knew who it was. Although I'm pretty confident, you know, that the second string effectively are still decent. We'll put up a, a decent fight. And I do seem to remember last season actually completely outplaying Dundee United. And somehow losing to them. So they hold no fears. Uh, now, Blackwell is getting a bit tired in there, and that's the one position we don't really have any cover for, isn't it? Of course it is. Right, well, what we'll do is we'll put Mikita, who shouldn't be playing on the left, but is going to have to. There, Lubala can swap flanks. Uh, Josh Todd was complaining about playing time, so he can play instead of Farrell. Haven't really got anyone on a booking. Uh, I think we could probably rest Cameron. Let's put Boyd on, give him some match sharpness. Um, and actually, I'm going to put Gillingham on as well for. Morrison. There we go. Try and get some people some some game time, I think, with a 6-1 lead. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to make it close all of a sudden because I've had the gall to make changes. I don't know where Doherty was going there. Odd. Anyway. We have controlled the game from start to finish, haven't we, really? I mean... Oh, okay. Not quite sure what happened there. All bouncing off people who really should have had it under their control, but never mind. Hey, is that the away end? Okay, Lubala to Todd, Mikita. Oh, Waters. Oh, good lad. Well done. Recovered your, your mistake. Oh, no. So if you'd have been chasing that down a bit, you might have panicked him there. But no, as it turns out, this is going to be their chance, isn't it? Or is it? Oh, again, I really think this highlight could have started a lot later than it did. Given the random points at which they start, did it really need to be this long? Back in soon. Oh, that's a lovely finish. That's his second. He's the playmaker. He's not even supposed to be the one bombing into the box. Not that he was in the box, but you know what I mean. Not the goal scoring threat. That's what I'm trying to imply. He is playing a 10, though. So he's had a fantastic day himself. He must have set up a few of these. Parker. Oh, Josh Todd. It's 8-1. He's been complaining about playing time. Um, despite the fact he's a squad player and, you know, the season hadn't started yet. So, smart lad. Uh, right, is anyone else tired? Charlie Barker, who's got two assists, apparently. Uh, Ubala, we can't really take you off, mate. Uh, let's put Macintosh on for Jordan Houston. 
give him a few minutes. Okay, I mean, our record win from last season was 8 1 away to Spartans. If we could grab another one. Rattles it off the woodwork. Safety first from Billum. 2.51 XG and we've scored eight goals. Good grief. Kind of implies we have scored some belters, doesn't it? Well, we saw the Battenson one. That was a fantastic strike. In off the underside of the bar. Right, what are we doing here, boys? There we go. <coughs> See, I mean... Mikita, I mean, he's playing a 6.9. He's not even being trained at that position. Boyd caught offside. I mean, Boyd's been okay, but hasn't really been the presence that uh, Innes was. One of those people, Innes Cameron, who you would never know whether someone was referring to his first or surname unless you actually knew him. I mean, either way round, that name makes sense. Mikita into Boyd. To Lubala. Come on, boys. See if we can get a ninth. Oh, it's up into the middle. Boyd, no. No, oh, back in soon. Back to Lubala. That's... Well... Normally, when you see that animation, you expect penalty, don't you? Of course not for us. Oh, no. Why would it be for us? Allegedly, that was their chance. Um. <clears throat> oh, not a good touch. <laughs> Come on, Bez. You're better than that. I mean, I know Stenhouse Mueller are probably not very good for League Two. But that's quite an encouraging start, isn't it? Destroying someone 8-1 on their own patch. Despite gifting them the lead. I'll take that. Well, not a bad start. <clears throat> now, I've had a look. Uh, Cove Rangers are also League 2. They are the overwhelming fates. They're basically the Montrose of this season. But Stenhouse Muir were actually fourth favourites in League 2. So the fact we destroyed them 8-1 means there's either a massive gulf between our two leagues. Or... We're really quite good. Now, the other thing I did see was that Cove Rangers beat Dundee United. So, we've got Cove Rangers next. And I've just seen as well, that is perfect. Cove Rangers next. We can play a slightly weakened side against, I think. And I think we should still be able to get a decent result out of that. I'm hoping so. Then, Dundee United away, for which the team that started this one should start and maybe this time we can take something from them and then we get a whole week before St Johnson so the first team can play St Johnson again and that will be at home so I'm cautiously optimistic that we might be able to get out of this of course you do need to win the group to get out but again I think we will give us a good account of ourselves no matter what I'm hoping we do. I hope we don't just suddenly collapse. <laughs> no reason at all. But <clears throat> if there's anything on that St Johnston game, then we will come back for that one. Whether we make that a double header and show you the opening league game with Wraith, we'll see. We'll see how long the highlights are for the St Johnston game. Um, but it's an encouraging start for the season. And again, I think we have done a pretty good job. I looked at the odds for League One. We are fourth favourites. I can't remember if I said that earlier, but so I think that's a, a good idea of what sort of strength I've managed to put into this side. And we could have a couple of positions being upgraded yet. So that might even potentially improve. Uh, so it could be another fun season. Fingers crossed. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye bye for now.